Andrew and Chris, how did you meet? We were setting up a walk uh, around the Kent Castles in the beautiful countryside. 210 miles. Amazing. 210 Amazing. miles. Yeah. And uh, I was looking for some sponsors and uh, MD UK recommended Andrew. Also, I think you, my wife, had seen your name in the paper. Really? Okay. Yeah, it was Fantastic. good, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the end result was that uh, a mm -hmm. phone call went and it was an immediate connection. Yeah. It was brilliant. And yeah. uh, you were a backup the whole way through I still, the walk. I still remember that, that day, that, that phone call, I was at work and uh, yeah, it, it was all instantly connecting because you, you told me about your daughter with Lim Girdle. Uh, what is Reflections in Colour? Reflections of Colour was an idea that came from taking a photograph of a gorse bush in Suffolk. Mm -hmm. Beautiful blue sky and ploughed field behind. And then I took a picture of just the yellow of the gorse bush. And when I got home and married the two, there seemed to be, uh, you didn't know which picture we were looking at. It looked like a reflection, but in fact it wasn't a reflection. So this gave me the idea that there's more to a picture than just the plain colour. So marrying the two, Reflections, which you can look either way, upside down, you never know which way you're looking at. And that was how the idea came about. Where did the idea for Reflections in Colour as a fundraiser come from? Uh, the Reflections in Colour, the idea of a fundraising thing came originally when Andrew came around the house and looked at some of the pictures and your response to them was quite interesting. It means something from a disability angle to me straight away. I yeah. think because of the difference in colour, the bright, vibrant is when you're feeling good about yourself, and then you flip into the, the, the darker side can mean what disability is all about. People see don't, yeah. don't see behind the scenes. So instantly, it just kind of resonates that there's a story to be told in these pictures. Yeah, I think that's right. And then originally, we were going to have a gallery show, uh, the COVID sport that. And then we came up with the idea of perhaps people writing what they thought about one or two pictures, yeah. which was your idea of it, but in the end, that snowballed. Yeah. And lots of people have written amazing stories. Yes, with a website, mm. yeah. yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, and uh, the people have just uh, backed it all the way, which I think is important. And when you read the words that go with the pictures, and I think with the yeah. book that we're producing, mm -hmm. where the yeah. words and pictures go together, I think we've got a remarkable, remarkable website, and yeah. a remarkable thing to and Chris, where does your inspiration for taking photographs come from? Uh, my inspiration comes from my cinematography side. I've always liked pictures that tell a story in a simple way, but adding depth to pictures. So I've always tried to make the pictures have depth, so your eye always carries through. Um, for instance, the picture I took of the pylons, but when you look at them closely, the pylons are marching across the countryside. So they add power to it. Uh, in motion pictures, you can change the angle of a camera in one move with a dolly move, and that can change the whole way the scene feels. Because in stills, you've got to try and balance that out with an image that takes your eye through, lighting the way it's put together. That's why the reflections also help, I think, in dealing with that. Yeah. Yeah. It just adds another dimension to anything. Clouds are another thing that inspire me. Clouds are very interesting in any picture. You get the right clouds and the right contrasting clouds, it adds pictures. And the light just pokes through the holly tree, obviously that's one of our favourites. Yeah, the holly there. tree. And, and amazing yeah. the way that light comes through the clouds at the right time. Exactly. Andrew, can you tell us about some of the people you approached and how do you know them all? Well, mostly through social media or through going to events with the charity and I've always found uh, in the early days of being diagnosed I didn't meet that many people with the disease and for years it's a very lonely thing to go through. So now if I see someone with the disease I'm right on there to want to introduce myself and to get, get chatting and so it all started by I'd say friends of mine from within the muscle disease community uh, and then spread out to people that I contacted Absolutely by fascinating. Uh, some really interesting characters as well from oh, all yeah. walks of life. Yeah, so yeah. I've had a wonderful poem written about a, what was known as a druid's tree on a farm and it was a simple picture. Very fortunate yeah. to have some amazing people involved with, with the project. And, yeah, uh, amazing people. It, it was, um, when I was contacting people, as soon as they saw the website, as soon as they clicked on it, they wanted in. 
It wasn't. Why should people go to the website? Well, see the pictures, read the stories. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, as simple as that. What do you like people to do when they get there? Ideally, to donate, but also to read the stories, to understand what muscular dystrophy is about, muscle wasting diseases. <sighs> they change your life, but they don't necessarily change your life in a bad way. You can still have a fantastic life, still live it to the full. And these stories prove that. And that's, I think that's what shows. And, and I think there's something for every budget. So you, you can buy the artwork, it looks fantastic on the wall of your house. And every time you walk past it, you'll see and remember the story behind it. And that will be powerful at a time when you need a bit of a picture. That's great. And then yeah. the book that's going to be published along with it will be mm -hmm. amazing as well, because yeah. you gain the pictures and the words and going to be very high quality books and pictures. Yeah. Uh, I think that's another way to do it. So you can buy the book, yeah. either in a magazine form or a very expensive book, but it'd be a coffee table book. And that book, when you open it up, the pictures and the stories will merge together beautifully. Like, share, yeah. um, click the notification bell, as Thomas would say. <laughs> um, but the more that these pictures and the stories get out there, um, the, the better it is for everyone. Yeah. I mean, my good mate here, mm -hmm. who's done a brilliant job, hopefully it will be successful. <laughs>